Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, you guys. I see there's a couple people in the chat. I see a couple people showing up in the chat. Hello, hello. Um, it says I'm live. So if you guys can see me, say hello. I see uh, a couple people are here. I see Terza. Hi, Terza. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. All right. I know the lag is crazy and it shows that I have at least eight people watching. So hello, you guys. Good to see you. Um, all right. Now I'm seeing some people pop in the chat. Hello, you guys. I'm trying to get my phone up here so I can see the chat. Hello, you guys. All right. Uh, Pama Bama. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Uh, little uh, insider info, you guys. You're hearing it here first. Uh, Miss Pam Bama and I are having a handmade and vintage Christmas sale next Thursday. I can't wait. And I better get to crafting because uh, I have a holiday weekend coming up. So I'm going to be busy doing that. And hello, Candace. Good to see you. And KB, hello. And Beth is in the chat. Hi, Beth. Good to see you. Uh, Lisa, hello, Lisa and Janet and Nancy. And I see more people popping in here. Hello, Phil Philomena. Hello. Oh, my goodness. Um, what a busy week already. I can't believe it's already Wednesday. I just feel like it was Wednesday like two days ago. <laughs> That's where I'm at. I was so exhausted. Uh, Monday when we got home, I think we got home about 11 p.m. from our road trip. I think that's what time we pulled in my driveway. Um, so Tuesday, I was just kind of not functioning very good and caffeine wasn't really helping me either. Um, hello, Christine. Good to see you. So yes, um, I think it spent, uh, I don't know, like an hour and a half, two hours unpacking everything up here. And I had a, a card table up here to put everything on uh, just to get it up here. Uh, so it's going to be an undertaking to show this all to you because I do have some bigger stuff. So hi, mom. Good to see you. All right. Oh, Candace. Yes. How was Allegan? Um, I know that it kind of rained like toward the afternoon part of the day. The storms that came through Wisconsin, I think Saturday night, went into Michigan on Sunday. So I hope it wasn't a total washout, but Allegan's always fun. There's always really um, cool stuff that people bring to set up at that show. All right, so let's get into it. Um, I'm not gonna spend super long on stuff because I have a lot to get through. And I have a sale at eight o'clock tonight over on Mother Tucker's channel. It's fantastic finds. So um, I am going to go probably rather quickly through everything just so that I am not buttoned up super close to our sale time. Have a little break to breathe in there. So um, I will move pretty quickly. So hi, Gavin. Good to see you. And Karen G. Hello. Hello. Oh, my gosh. Are you guys like having a really hard time up there with your air? Because I know. Uh, it's day two of the entire state of Michigan under a, um, like not good air quality. It's like, it goes from, I think green, which is good up into purple. And our state right now is like into dark red and purple. Like they're telling people not to go outside if you don't have to go outside, um, and to not walk your dog and stuff like that. It's bad. And it just looks like like looking out the window, it looks like everything is in a dense fog outside. Um, pretty much the entire Midwest is under the same kind of air quality warning right now, which is weird. Um, the, the weather guy yesterday said that the 43 years that he has been the weather guy, he's never had the entire state under poor air quality. So um, the fires are bad in Canada. And there's kind of like this vortex of wind that just keeps pulling it down. So Janet, you're still smoky in Chicago too. Yeah, it was it was crazy going around the, the city on Monday. Um, you could barely see the skyline, which is crazy because it's a huge skyline. And the, the tollway that goes right next to it, uh, you know, the buildings are pretty big and you could hardly see any of it, which was crazy. So hello, Shanna, I missed you. Good to see you. Okay, so let's get into it. And um, I will note as I go along, if it's something that I'm keeping, um, something that I picked up as a gift or uh, something that will be in the sale tonight, because I did pull some things from 
my weekend goodies um, that will be in Fantastic Finds live sale tonight. So uh, let's get into it. I'm going to start with Christmas because I have a lot of Christmas to show and it's kind of piled on top of everything else. So I'm going to go through that first and then get it out of the way so I can get to some of the other stuff. So if you guys have questions as I'm going along, let me know down in the chat. And thank you guys for joining me tonight. I know this was kind of, I didn't know if I was going to do this or not. I kind of decided Monday if I was going to do a haul um, before our sale. Um, and I was going to consider doing a live sale tomorrow, but I'm so tired. I think I'm just going to do, not do it. Um, and then we'll have a busy week next week. We're hitting it hard next week with Christmas. So I can't wait for that. All right. So the first thing, um, I'll start with her because she's on the top, is this lovely Christmas pose gal. Uh, last year at Elkhorn, I picked up one of these to craft with and I made, um, I decorated the bottom of her skirt. I gave her some more things to hold up here. I decorated her hat. I left this one behind last year because of the damage to the, like um, the holly leaves and stuff at the bottom of her dress. But the one that I made last year, I actually ended up covering up most of the holly leaves anyway. Um, and she was only $5. So yeah, I rescued her this time. Um, and I didn't see her last month. So I picked her up this time. So she will get a little makeover come uh, de November or December area. And then this guy was a good find. Uh, uh, you guys, I can't wait to do this video. Um, Last year, Jeffrey of Real Nifty Vintage went to the largest antique mall in Wisconsin. It's in Columbus, Wisconsin. Um, kind of like Columbus, driving through the town, it's just a tiny little town. And they have this huge antique mall. And I believe it was an old kind of factory that they converted into this antique mall. And it's, if I remember, it's 77,000 square feet and 444 booths. And it took mom and I, with a break, uh, over five hours to get through just two levels of it. We didn't even go to the third level, which is mostly um, furniture and bigger salvage things. And I, Jeffrey, when he was there, he had to split his video into two different parts and said he needed to take a nap by the second one. Uh, and it is huge. But there was so much cool stuff at the store. So I cannot wait to get that one done. I did pick up this Harold Gale Santa. He's got a nice fluffy beard left on him uh, from that antique mall. So I did pick up quite a bit of stuff from the antique mall. It was super fun. So yes, Harold Gale Santa, he's in pretty, pretty good shape. So he does have like the bendy arms where you could pose him and do something else in those white go-go boots. He does a uh, free stand as well and really good face on him. He's got really, really, it's not cracked or anything like that. I love these Harold Gale Santas. All right, let me stick Santa down here. And then, oh, this, this also came from the Columbus Antique Mall. Um, it is just a cute little Santa, but it's actually a little uh, candy container. It's a uh, made in uh, Germany. No, actually it is Japan. Uh, they did do, German ones did do, uh, little candy containers like this too, but this guy's Japan, but he's just a cute little Santa. I thought he was cute. I liked his little glittery base too. Um, this is cool. I mean, I geek out over stuff that's in the original packaging, uh, but I love this. I have something very similar to this that I, uh, with the curling ribbon in its original box that I like to put underneath my Christmas tree. Uh, along with like old toys and stuff like that, blow molds, bigger stuff, along with my presents. Um, and this was like new old stock curling ribbon. And on the back, it's got all of these um, gift tags that you could cut out. I just thought it was great. I love these kind of things. So uh, great. You know, it, it sits up just fine. So I think it could easily pop into a display if you don't want to use the ribbon. You could just leave it in the box. So I like that. All right. All right. Did anybody else sneak in here? I didn't see anybody else sneak in here. All right. Uh, also from the Columbus Antique Mall is this angel. She, I do have the lid of the box. I just left it off so I could get her out of here a little easier. It's a little musical angel um, made out of felt. 
and she has kind of a posed doll head, a little um, chenille candle. She's super sweet. So yeah, she works. She's pretty clean and everything. She does have her original box. I love to find those, especially with their box. Okay. And what else do we have Christmas? Oh, this probably is my favorite thing. I don't know. It's probably at least top two of my favorite things that I got the entire weekend. Um, if you guys saw my Instagram, you've already seen this. But uh, the box is really not that great a shape. But I don't really care about the box so much. It's what's in the inside. And this is very, very hard to find. Um, I've never come across one of these in the wild before. It is a... Um, so it's kind of that composite ceramic kind of uh, paper pulp material. And it's a light that you hang on the wall and it's Rudolph. So they actually uh, made another version of this where they're, the Rudolph is wearing a little red top hat. So there's two different variations of this. And yeah, he works. I don't have my um, extension cord handy. Otherwise, I would plug him in for you. But uh, he works. I did test him. And he's pretty awesome very hard to come by um i and it's cool that it has this original box i do like that but the box has seen better days but he's really really awesome i love him i'm probably definitely going to sell him i don't have an appropriate place where i could hang him on the wall uh to you know display him as much as i love deer you guys know this i probably will not keep him i probably will pass him on but he's just awesome. Somebody will love him just as much as I do. Um, all right. So I think that's all of the Christmas. Yes. Okay. So we're going to move into like dolls and toys because I did pick up some of that stuff next. Hey, Jason, you snuck in here. Uh, I got this cute little Dakin stuffed animal. He's kind of from the 70s. He's got a wire armature in his leg so you can kind of pose him around. I just love his big derpy little ears. Very cute. And then rubber face. Here's a little rubber face tiger. This came from Elkhorn. There is one specific lady that I usually get something from her booth every time we go. And I've got some stuff from her as I've got some other smaller tin litho things from her. But this was just a sweet little rubber face tiger. This is uh, actually made by Gund, G-U-N-D. Uh, remnant of the tag is still intact, and he would have come with a little yellow ribbon tied around him. So likely I'm going to give him a new ribbon, and I probably will touch up his nose with some black paint. And I probably will give his fur a little bit of a combing just to make him a little bit more fluffy, but he's just a little guy. I really like him. And then I found a... Ruthie Newton, little squeak girl. She is uh, made by Sun Rubber. There she's marked on the back. She squeaks, but she kind of, um, you guys know I don't like to do the squeaky, the squeaky toys because of the puppy. The puppy will go crazy. Um, but yes, there's, uh, we actually came across the boy counterpart to her, uh, but he was converted into a lamp. They cut like a whole in his head and then they stuck some things out of his hand and then he was glued to a plank of wood and it was just not it was not a good look so i only rescued her um i did not get her counterpart there hello heather good to see you i am sharing my bounty yes and you are just in time for the old stuff okay so the the next thing that i'm going to show you i actually picked up to give to ariana she hasn't seen this yet, but I told her I got her something. Um, I got her one of these older um, Evening Star uh, reversible ribbons with the uh, metal fringe at the bottom. I never see these in good shape, and this one was pretty good. It's like reversible, so you can flip the pin back over and wear it that way if you didn't want the colorful side. I know I tried to do some research on this to figure out, like, more information or what these stand for. I couldn't find a thing about it. All that I know that it's a Freemason thing. I have no idea about any of the lettering 
what it means on there, but it is in really good shape. And like usually the la when I see these, all the fringe is pretty much like falling apart and, and the ribbon is usually ripped in somewhere. So yes, it's from Arkansas. Yes, it is. So uh, I don't think Ariana is here watching, but I picked that up for her. And Pam, you're going to like this. This, uh, well, I think the ribbon is from the 1800s. So this is probably the next oldest thing that I picked up. Um, I do look at the antique ephemera things from time to time. And uh, this just, like I saw it in a case, a locked case. And I was like, I have to get in there and look at that because I know it's something special. So it is, uh, when you open it up, it does form a heart, which is cool in itself. So it's crushed velvet. It kind of looks like a shell on the outside too. So it is um, a little book here and it was gifted to Gertrude in 1905. And there's signatures, um, little inscriptions that go all the way through here. Um, and there were some signatures that went up into 1906. I, I think the middle of the year in 1906, but there was one thing that I wanted to read in here. Uh, Dear Gertrude, whenever you see a frog in a tree, just pull its tail and think of me, your friend, Frida. I thought that was funny. Um, but there's just like, there's little poems and inscriptions that go all the way through here, which is really fun. And I love to see the handwriting in here too. So that's definitely an older piece that I picked up. I really, really like that. And uh, this, this is coming for sale tonight. Uh, it is uh, actually Mama Pam saw it first and she said, Amy, you need to go look at that. And I took a second to look at it and I was like, oh my gosh, that is, that is amazing. So it is a Millie Fiore, and my camera's really not doing it just right, justice right now, um, but it is filled with Millie Fiore little flower, glass flowers, glass tiles. Um, it is just like, it's not very big, but the amount of detail that is in this, and I did some extensive research on this to figure out who made it um, and all of that stuff. Um, it was actually made in 2010, so it's not super old. But the guy that made this, he still has his studio. You can go visit him right now. And um, he actually uh, sells stuff online. He sells stuff out of his workshop. He does, he's a master mosaicist and he's been working uh, since 1978. They also make, he also makes micro mosaic jewelry, um, big, huge wall installments. He's done stuff for celebrities. There's stuff in museums. It's really amazing. Um, and I'll talk about this a little bit more tonight on the sale, but it's just stunning. And I did take some close up photographs. So uh, if you come to the sale later, you will definitely see really clear picture of all the detail that's in here because Jason's going to pop it up on the screen. But oh my gosh, it's so, so cool. I didn't know a thing about it when I saw it. I just knew that it was special and I needed to pick it up. So, all right. And we've got some lucite candles. They are the clear candles with the kind of gold um, or coppery kind of flakes that go through there. Those are the like eight inch uh, do not ignite. They have those stickers on the bottom. Uh, Nan. I always think of Nan. Every time I find lucite candles, it's Nan. So those were a fun find. Now I have two sets of lucite candles. I was like, couldn't find any for a really long time. Um, but I always like the ones that have the bigger flakes versus the glitter. I just think that they show off, show off a little bit more. All right. So we've got some linens. And these are coming for sale tonight. It's um, a pair of little embroidered kitty pillowcases. These also came from that giant store in Columbus, Wisconsin. Some cute little, I love the tiny little mouse that's tucked in between the tail. So a pair of those little kitty pillowcases. Those are cute. Oh, hello, Robert. Good to see you. And we've got a little children's hanky. It's a little puppy. And uh, she's over her shoes. She's taken them off and it's just walking in her socks. Uh, I think I've had a variation of this particular hanky before. Maybe it was a different animal, but I remember that it was carrying its shoes over its arm. So 
I just thought it was cute. I love finding these children's hankies because I don't, I don't come across them super often. So I do like to pick those up when I see those. And then more linens. All right. This cute pillow. I couldn't resist this pillow. This came from Elkhorn. And I picked it up because of the colors in uh, the fabric. Hello, don't you know? Good to see you. Um, I picked it up because of the colors in the fabric. And so it's got a light yellow background and then oranges and blues that go in there. So uh, the little bunnies have gotten into the paint pails. And Mama is surprised. And then she has to scrub all the bunnies. I love that she had to tie up her ears. And then hanging all the bunnies out to dry. And then they're going for a little stroll. I just thought it was super cute. And it's backed in um, orange terry cloth. So I thought it was fun. I like to pick up like these vintage linen pillows. I feel like somebody probably made this pillow um, out of fabric and stuff. But I thought it was cute for summertime. Um, let's see. What else? We have... Uh, Oh, I've got some little tinies. So I picked this teeny tiny little tiger up from Vintage Soul Thrifters booth this time. Um, he's just a cute little guy. I thought I picked him up. Uh, he's probably going to make his way into a mystery box at some point because um, he's just teeny tiny and can fit in those mystery boxes. I love making those now. Um, I did pick up a pair. I am keeping these a pair of Flock to Joseph Originals Little Deer. Love finding these guys. They do have their stickers and stuff still there on the bottom. And Easter Bunny. So this is uh, something else that I'm keeping. It is a like spun ball and flocked head and the old chenille kind of ears. I'm keeping that to do something crafty with. For next Easter. I love these, especially if they're clean. And this guy's really clean. Sometimes these can get super dirty. And Jason, if you're still here watching, I picked this guy up for Jason uh, at Elkhorn. It was actually like the first thing that I picked up at the show. I know Jason loves these kitschy styrofoam things. So every time I see one now, I have to pick it up for Jason. Um, and here's another thing that I'm keeping, uh, this, this particular, um, it's a Hallmark black flocked cat and a witch hat. Um, I do craft with these for Halloween time. Um, I already know where he's going to live. I found the perfect tin last year and didn't have anything to put on it. So I know exactly where he's going. So that's something that I'm keeping. And I did pick up some jewelry. Uh, first off is this, hopefully you can see it. It's kind of an oil slick cat. Um, and it's got orangey red kind of eyes on it, but it's really cool. Like definitely oil slick cat. I thought it'd be a cool piece for Halloween again too. And it does have a safety clasp on the back. I'm really not sure of the age of this. I haven't really had time to research it much. But I thought it was cool. And I did get, I'm going to need the tweezers for this. I did get two, um, two micro mosaic pins. And the first one, let's see here. If my camera's going to cooperate. This one's like a little bar style kind of micro mosaic. It's got three, um, three little spots there with the flowers. There we go. Now you can see it teeny teeny tiny little flowers in there um it's not a very large pin at all it's very very tiny which i liked it was a little bit different than the round style ones and then this one is really pretty this one um i do like the border that goes around the outside of this one so it's gold tone and then it's got uh, i do like the little inlaid border that goes around the outside of that one and the bright blue background. I've really been enjoying hunting for these now that I know what they look like because uh, I couldn't find any for a long time and then I, I found one and now I keep finding more. So 
they're exciting to hunt for. And I got a good education from a vendor at Elkhorn that had some very old ones, um, very, very old ones. And the difference between the more like more vintage uh, or more modern ones uh, than the really old ones is like the settings and the size of the tiles that they use are so much smaller than like this kind of style one. And I saw one that was actually, um, it was a skyline of buildings and you had to look at it. You couldn't tell from the naked eye that it was a micro mosaic. You had to look at it with a magnifying glass just to see the tiles. Like they were minuscule, like thinner than a sheet of paper. It was crazy to see that. So, uh, oh, this, this some um, kitschtastic plastic jewelry. Um, that is something that I'm going to be keeping. Um, I am probably not going to dismantle this and craft with it. I'm probably just going to keep it to wear. And what else do we have next? We've got, um, oh, I did buy a piece of glass. You guys know I typically don't pick up glass unless it's something special. Um, and I picked this up at Elkhorn. It is an Ellie Smith square bottom, uh, four fingered amberina. And I saw it from way out uh, in the middle of the aisle and I kind of ran into the booth because I was like, oh, I need to, I need to pick that up. Uh, this is one that you don't typically see super often. It's not as common of the cuts. And they did do a couple variations um, in different pieces in this kind of square cut. It looks like a rocket ship, don't you think? Or uh, a blooming tulip. I kind of get that too. But yes, that was a fun find. That was the only piece of glass that I picked up this time. Uh, this lady. This was a fun find at Elkhorn. Uh, I had never seen anything like this before and I went over to her and I studied her and I was like, I have no, no clue. And so in her head is a pin cushion. Now, when I found her, she didn't have any pins in her. So I went into my crafty stash and just added some pins up there. So you can see, so she's made of that kind of that uh, composite paper mache ceramic kind of material. And it says green for holidays and blue for everything else. And then at the bottom, it says my appointments. So the body of her, um, you can see it's got the calendar printed on here and all of the dates. So when there's something important you need to remember, somebody's birthday or an appointment that you have, you take the pin, depending on which one, and plug it into her pin cushion. How cool is that? And she's also a bank. And no stopper, but I'm going to see, I think I have an extra one that's laying around up here in my kind of fix-it kit. Uh, she's made by Royal Sealy, which I thought was very unusual. Um, I'd never seen anything like this. And Royal Sealy typically does ceramic pieces. Um, and I wasn't, I was very surprised to find out that Royal Sealy made this piece here. But I thought she was unusual. I was trying to look for different weird kind of out of the box, a little bit out of the ordinary kind of stuff this time. Besides my normal kitschy kind of stuff, I was looking for kind of unusual things this time. Um, speaking of kitsch, um, meow meow. Uh, I picked up my namesake, the yellow Winkin' Kitty salt and pepper shakers. Um, they do need a bath. They're quite dirty. I've not had a chance to clean these guys up yet but I always am happy to come across. I do have a set of these in my personal collection already. So um, I will be passing these kitties on. Love to find those. We do have quite a bit of ceramics to get to. Um, so all right, this, this is cool. This is coming for sale tonight. It, um, it's a Siamese kitty with the bobble head um, in the center. I love that. Um, it is marked on the bottom, so it's from 1984. So it's not uh, it's not a 60s ceramic piece. It's it's an 80s ceramic piece, but I do do not see these hardly ever. Usually the ones the mugs that are like this are the the more risque ones, uh, the man and the woman that have movable parts. If you know what I'm, what I'm talking about, um, but I don't run across the kitty one super often. But meow meow, I love that. Very cute. Um, this little gal, oh, is this so cute? This is coming for sale tonight as well. So this is a teeny tiny little Joseph Originals. 
um, a little bit harder to come by piece, actually. Um, there's the sticker there, but it is a sweet little baby uh, nestled in the blanket. And there's a whole series of these. And then there's a tiny little white kitten that is peeking over the blanket. Oh, it's so cute. And it has tiny, tiny little applied flowers around the blanket. That's going to be for sale tonight, too, if I didn't mention that. Um, Maisie is barking. Uh, the, the neighbor's out working in the yard, I think. Uh, and then Beth, I know, was in the chat a little bit earlier. I got this from Beth's booth. And it's uh, a fun pixie perched on a shoe. I want him to focus because he has great detail. Okay, there you go. You can see his face. He's got tiny little... Uh, eyelashes, a lot of detail painted on him, and he's just perched on the boot. It is a planter. He was fun, very fun. Um, this gal, all right, this gal is for sale tonight as well. She is very hard to find this whole series. Um, it's a bell, okay, and it is very hard to find series of flower face girls. Um, they're all bells and they all list the name of the flower plus the month on the shape of the bell. Um, I think I've only come across these one time. One time I've ever seen another one of these and I think it was like in the $80 range so I didn't pick it up. Uh, but this was uh, something I had to rescue. I knew she was special that she definitely needed to go into somebody's July display in all of her carnation glory. All right. And then we've got some diamond pottery critters. We've got a pig and a duck. These are coming tonight. I have some Rempel squeak toys um, coming tonight as well. So these guys, uh, the pig and the duck. I don't think I've ever found the duck before. Maybe I found the pig. I can't remember. Uh, I've come up. Usually it's the cat or the dog pieces that I come across, but not the farm animals so much. But I love these guys. They're just so happy and cute. All right. Toyo Japan Vintage Ceramics. Um, Robert, can you email me if you have a picture of anything? Uh, that would help me out. I don't recognize the name right off the bat, but if I see what it is, I might be able to give you some more information about it. All right. Uh, where was I? Ceramics. Oh, We've got a Acme Japan bug planter. I love to find these guys. Um, this one is a little bit later version. Usually the, the earlier versions were more in the matte kind of finish. And he does have uh, more of a glaze, especially to the, the log tree stump kind of planter to him. And um, a little bit shinier, more brighter finish than the older style Acme bug planters. But he's fun. And I also got, now you can see the difference. I also got um, another one of the Acme bug figurines. You can see the difference there. He's older than this one. Um, you can see the detail in the way that they're painted. They're a little bit different. And teeny tiny, teeny tiny little pixie friends. These are coming tonight. I love the teeny tinies. They're so cute for little shadow boxes and tiny little areas just to pop those little pixies in. I love both of those. Those are coming tonight. Um, oh, another one. Oh, gosh. She's just beautiful. She's coming tonight as well. Um, there's a lot of pixies in tonight's sale. Um, she is another uh, Acme Japan, and she is a flower leaf fairy. Uh, really love her. Love her pose, love everything about her. She is pretty special. This series, um, I had one of the leaf pixies last week that was from the fall. Uh, this is a little bit different series that uh, represents flowers versus leaves. So I really, really like her. Um, Mila, I, do, I sell only here on YouTube. So YouTube live sales. Uh, we actually have a sale tonight over on Mother Tucker's Antiques channel at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can find me over there. And most times, uh, sometimes I do pop-up sales over here on my channel as well. So just uh, if you're curious, you can give me a follow over on Instagram. I always post when my sales are, will be and what's going to be for sale there. 
and the community tab here on my channel will always give you information on where the sales and what time they are. Um, let's see, what else? We've got, do, 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 I did that, I did that. Oh, this, I have not done this yet. This is, this is really cool. This is really special. And it's, oh, it's so good. I love this piece so much. Um, I don't know if Bill's here watching, but he's probably going to freak out about this. So this is a sugar bowl and salt and pepper shaker set. Um, so it's the little wood stump and you lift the little acorn lid and that's the sugar bowl. Okay. And then the pixies that are perched are the shakers and they come out, but I love their posing. I love these so much and I have zero idea who the maker is on these. I've never seen these before. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, I definitely think it's an older piece, probably from the late 1940s up early 50s. I do not know, uh, but I'd never seen anything like this before. And it's in immaculate condition. Like there's no chips, there's no repairs, nothing wrong with it. Uh, I had a, I did pay up a little bit for this, but it was so cool. I just, I had to get it. I really, really did. Um, I, I like to try it. If I see something, I've never seen it before. I usually have to pick it up. Um, just because I know it's like so cool. Um, what else do we have? Um, I got all of that. I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. So, uh, Beth, who was in the chat, um, Beth sets up a booth at Elkhorn, um, she has amazing stuff in her booth and I picked up a lot of PY Apple pieces from her. She was so, so kind to me and it was so nice to meet her in person. Um, and I got all of the PY Apple pieces. If you guys saw my post on Instagram, um, or my little short here on YouTube, you have seen these already, but I have to show them all to you and tell you about all the pieces. Um, so first off, uh, Karen, I am going to part with the sugar bowl and parting with that. I am not keeping that. All right. So the first piece here is, um, these are all PY Japan. Okay. They're all PY Japan apple faces. This uh, particular tiny teapot was actually marketed as a child's toy. Believe it or not, they did a whole little series of children's kind of tea set. So there's little miniature uh, PY apple pieces and it has this fun little underplate that is the little leaf. So cute. Love these. All right. And then we've got salt and pepper shakers. If you guys are into the anthropomorphic fruit, these are some of the highest quality uh, face ceramics that you can possibly get are the PY Japan. Um, I just love them. They're so happy. You can't help but smile when you look at those guys. And then we've got, I've got two, two of, I know the kid set is ridiculous. Um, two of the teacups and saucers. Great. Um, these are great to display, especially in the fall. Um, if you like to decorate, like, you know, if you don't want to put out your Halloween stuff early, um, but you don't really know what to put out, like apples are great to decorate with, like in that late August, September kind of area, um, cause it's apple picking season. I just love these. All right. So there's two of the teacups and saucers. And then we've got creamer, creamer and the sugar bowl. Oh, I love these faces and PY did, I think they did five different fruit faces, five different varieties of fruit faces and some, some other kind of random ones in salt and just in salt and pepper shakers, but so darling. And I have, uh, I have had one of these before. These are, the smaller serving bowls. So I have two of those. Uh, it originally would have come with a larger serving bowl uh, that would go in the center and four of these smaller uh, little serving bowls. These were meant to be like salad bowls or berry bowls, um, but cute. These uh, also look great displayed up like this in uh, one of those plate rails. 
they sit up really nicely like that. <clears throat> Robert, my email is up here on the screen right now. All right. Um, two. There's two of the smaller plates. Two of the smaller serving plates. I just they just put so much detail and uh, the way that these are painted are just so high quality. I just, I can't get over PY ceramics. They're, they're definitely top, top five ceramic companies for me. And then two of the dinner plates, two of the bigger size. These are big dinner plates. How cute is that? Can you just imagine eating your uh your dinner off of that plate <laughs> that would be so cute you could have apple pie on those plates love those so much so that is uh yes Catherine. there is there's a whole orchard of fruits all right i think i think i've gotten through everything maybe not I see I lost, I lost a book. I lost a cutie. It got caught up in the Christmas. All right. All right. Here's the last thing is, uh, one of these cutie paper doll books. Um, so cute. If you've not seen this one before, uh, it, it has some of my favorite little outfits in here. So she could be a flower. And there's a mushroom. There's a little mushroom. Cute as that. A little caterpillar. So cute. I love these books. Especially when they're not cut up. A little bumblebee. I think I've had this book once before. Look at his little... His little cheeks hanging out of the chaps. I can't. It's too much. There's a little doodle dog. I love these. Little Dutch girl. Very cute. Do kids play with paper dolls anymore? You know, I did when I was a kid. I played with paper dolls. All right, so that's the whole book of Cupies. And now I think I have covered everything. I think I got through everything. Um, there will be at least three videos coming out from finding all this stuff. Uh, it, was a, it was a long weekend for sure of hunting. And I think we got home, yeah, we got home at like, we pulled in my driveway 11 o'clock at night on Monday um, because we went to that Columbus Antique Mall when they opened at 8 a.m. And then it took us five hours to go through it. And then it was over five hours to drive home. So that was quite the day. So um, hello, everybody that has just happened on. I'm sorry that you missed it. Make sure if you're just hopping on, go back and watch the replay if you would like. Um, I have mentioned everything that I was either keeping that I bought for somebody else or that was going to be in the sale tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern over on Mother Tucker's Antiques channel. Uh, come join us over there at eight o'clock. I know that we're going to be showing um, some more fantastic finds from our vintage community members after the sale tonight. So stick around for that. And if you guys have questions about anything, my email is right here. You guys know how to get a hold of me. Um, you can message me on Instagram too, if that's easier for you. So thank you guys for joining me. That wasn't super long. That was like 45 minutes. Um, I thought I had way more stuff than that to get through, but I have been kind of moving it along. So uh, thank you guys again for joining me. And uh, so what I have coming up tonight at eight o'clock on Mother Tucker's, it's just me and Jason. Next Monday, um, it will be myself, Jason, Garden Guy Bill, and Misty, Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern on Mother Tucker's channel. And then uh, another installment of Fantastic Finds next Wednesday, but it's going to be a special installment. Bill is going to be joining us and we're going to be doing Vintage Christmas next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's also on Mother Tucker's channel. And then next Thursday, 
Pamma Bama, uh, Pamela Blanchard of Oak Grove Mercantile is going to be joining me over here on my channel at 8 p.m. Eastern for Vintage and Handmade Christmas. I can't wait. It's going to be a fun uh, next week or so. And I can't believe it's already July. So that's crazy to me. So yes, if you guys are just getting here and you missed it, go back, watch the replay, leave me a comment, give the video a thumbs up on your way out. We'll see you guys at 8 p.m. Eastern over on Mother Tuckers tonight. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Bye, guys.